Last year, the American Society for Quality, the ASQ, embarked on a global study to create a baseline of fundamental quality to understand continuous improvement practices around the world and provide a comparative guide for businesses to improve overall organizational performance. The first release of the research, uh, Discoveries 2013, uncovered some very surprising findings. And here to tell us a bit about the survey and some of those discoveries is Laurel Nelson Rowe, Managing Director of the ASQ. Good morning, Laurel. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. How are you? Just oh, not too bad. Hey, uh, first, just give us a really quick overview of what the survey was, just to kind of bring our, our viewers up to speed here. Sure. Um, we enacted this survey because there basically was not a global study of quality practices, disciplines, resources, um, training, etc. It, it just didn't exist and so there was a, a gap, uh, as we say, in the quality world to fill. Many of these research studies are national in scope, um, but there wasn't the overarching multi-nation um, status report on where we were now and where we could go with quality practices, processes, and disciplines. And, and how, many, how many respondents were there to the, uh, to the survey and was it, was it worldwide? Were pretty much all countries represented or what, what was the makeup there? Yes, um, actually those are some of the surprises. We had aimed to uh, create the survey for 15 nations, 16 nations, which represent the 80% of the global GDP. We actually had um, 22 nations uh, in the initial analysis, the Discoveries 2013. We also aimed for about 2,400 responses, and we have that. The initial uh, analysis is on 2,000 respondees, and these are leaders, senior leaders of quality in their organizations. And again, this is an organization study, a company study. Um, so it is very, very comprehensive. We aimed for companies of a billion dollars in revenue and above, and we got a very diverse set. We got plenty of those $1 billion and above companies, but we also have companies that achieve less than $100 million in their revenue. So that's another opportunity for future studies. In other words, small business quality. Uh, you, you mentioned that there were some, some surprising things that turned up. What, what's, what was probably the most surprising uh, result or surprising data that you, that you turned up? Uh, uh, in terms of surprising, we, we saw that um, quality training and competencies aren't as standardized across manufacturing and services. This initial cut of the data is looking at um, the two big buckets of manufacturing and services. So the, the, uh, the use of competencies, functional competencies, the use of training above and beyond ISO, is not as pervasive. Um, so our quality professionals and quality practitioners have needs of skills and tools training. Um, we've also had a, a number of responses or uh, uh, uses of the data. So some organizations are already using the data to gauge how much they're spending per person on training and skill development. Some are saying, well, we don't uh, incentivize our executives or teams to achieve quality performance and continuous improvement results. Should we do that? Many organizations are looking at the data for that. So um, the, I guess the most part of the most surprising thing is we, we actually accomplished the research with a good result and it's in strong demand. We thought it would be, but now it definitely is coming to be. Do there seem to be a, uh, a common I guess theme is, is what I would think about, something that maybe tied the results all together in, in some way, something that kind of ran through the whole, uh, the whole survey? Yes, we've, we've actually um, achieved, we've, we've organized the research into four themes, overarching themes, and I might turn around the question and, and ask, are you often asked, what's the best quality infrastructure? What's the best structure for our, uh, for our quality organization now that quality is everyone's job, do we still need a department? Well, there are many centralized departments. So one of our themes is quality governance and management, how you do that. A second theme is outcomes and measurement. So again, we at ASQ are asked, and I'm sure you're asked, what's the best measurement system? What's the best approach to scorecarding? And how do you deliver and report those outcomes 
Is it organization wide? Is it to senior leaders? Is it only to the teams? Is it siloed? So that's our second theme. Our third theme is competencies and training. I've talked about that a little bit to see how pervasive uh, training of all sorts from ISO to auditing to Six Sigma to the full systems models such as Baldridge. And our fourth theme, and this is a very hot topic at ASQ, is what is the culture of quality? What does it mean? What is it when you're an organization that is multinational in scope? What must you have in your culture of quality? Well, that, that's great, Laura. I want to jump in here because that, that kind of leads to the next question is, in your perspective, in, in its entirety in the survey, what do you think the data tells us about the current state of quality and, and where quality is going as a culture for these organizations that responded? Where, what are they thinking about in, in terms of improving their quality and, and having that culture as part of their, their quality conversations going forward? Um, I would say that the research, it, well, we've created the baseline. We intend to do this type of research about three years from now, and then we hope to see the, Moodle, the, the needle have moved. What we did see is fair sophistication of some tools and technologies in some large-scale organization, but what we, what we have is a great deal of opportunity. Um, we all know that the opportunities for improvement um, are tremendous. The state of quality is strong, but in need of a more pervasive approach um, more resources, I'm sure everyone would say they could use more resources, um, more tr tools, training. Many organizations want to have that culture of quality from the ground up for every employee and, and from the top down. So senior leadership, um, executive leadership, the voice of quality is very, very important. Um, and, and Laurel, if people want to uh, access this, uh, this report, uh, where would they go? Okay, um, the Discoveries 2013 report um, is downloadable through the globalstateofquality.org. That's globalstateofquality.org website. Um, there's many different tools in addition to the report itself. We're certainly rolling the research out through presentations and dialogues around the world. And this is just the first of three reports. The next report, Analysis and Trends, will be available in July. And the third report, which really takes the loop back of everything that we've learned uh, with dialogues and the rollout of the research, that third report will be produced in November and will actually have about eight different spotlight reports, either region or topic specific, that will be released beginning July through November of this year. Pretty and, and comprehensive approach. Do, do, you, do you have to be an ASQ member to, uh, to, to get this report or can anybody get it? Discoveries 2013 is uh, available to members as well as non-members free. Okay. The next reports will continue to be available to members and uh, free of charge, but we really are seeing that the comprehensive approach, all of the three reports would be of value not only to corporations for benchmarking that are not members of ASQ, so of course we'd love more members, but we also would see that it would be of value to governments and non-governmental agencies to see where they are in the state of quality. Okay. Well, Laurel Nelson Rome, ASQ Managing Director, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Love your show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So long. <laughs>